You are now entering my universe. I am the lens, the subject, and the authority. Every one of us inherits the curses of our ancestors. I'm watching the curses of my family slowly kill us. So I'm going to war, and there will be casualties. When I move back to New York City, I ignore that I've taken my mother's bed. She sleeps on the couch now. I don't care. Daddy's happy I'm back. You always talk way so much. I'm just gonna tell the story one more time. Like you don't know when to stop. You're an American, she says. I tell her I'm first generation. The older women warn me, I'll never see you as a human being. Mom, your attitude is not cool. So who's gonna talk you? Shit. When you have a kid, you're gonna realize that this is love. That's the real one. Understand this, then it's a price to pay for everything you do. Brave, stubborn, narcissistic. <laughs> Beba. Why not us? Rebecca Hunt, at long last, I get to meet you. I was trying to remember where I saw Be Beba. Um, I'm trying to remember where I saw that. Uh, was it, it like, did it play in New York City at a festival? I know it had premiered at Tiff. I know it's been at Berlin. No, it didn't. It, this is its first time in New York. Oh, okay. Is, oh, interesting. Because, oh, right. It makes sense. Right. It's Tribeca. So I'm just trying to remember where I, where I saw it. But I did see it. And I was like, note, it, note this film because this is a uh, talent. No kidding. It's good to start off most uh, interviews calling somebody very talented. But in this case, it's, it actually applies. It really applies. So, Thank you. Uh, how's it going? It's honestly going amazing like yeah it's the new york premiere i'm from new york it's at tribeca like right. my family's here i'm i couldn't be more like grateful for all the stuff that's happening right they can just shoot down right uh like whatever eighth avenue whatever they could just yeah, seventh, exactly. seventh avenue whatever right to like spring suit and end up right at like spring studios or something yeah it's it's dope it's really fantastic. Yeah, I didn't think about that part of it. Of course, you're from New York City. And actually, I now live, back, I, I went to Bard too, but you, a little before you maybe. <laughs> so, and um, I found myself like about two years ago, I moved back to that area. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's a big change, but I, w I was really ready for it. But that's that's another Where are you living? Like Hudson? Like what is no, not even that far up. I'm closer to Tivoli. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I love Tivoli. Yeah. I live in Tivoli. I mean, it's like paradise. People we shouldn't really promote it too much because then people too many people want to live there because you've lived there and I lived there, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> um, but congratulations on on the film, uh seriously. And um um I wrote some notes just so I wouldn't forget. Oh, one other thing. Petra Costa was on this podcast. Did that make you happy? Yeah, she's great. She was an executive producer of my film. I know. Well, when she did Elena, she she was on this podcast. I talked to her many years ago. Oh, I love it. That's one of my favorite films. And definitely, uh, um, it definitely was influenced me and influenced Beba in a big way. Um, yeah, I can see the, I can see that connection quite, you know, like it was, it was like a nice surprise when I saw that among the films. Also, Terrence, um, uh, Terrence Nance. what? Terrence Nance. 
Yeah, I don't know why I blanked. He was on my show a number of times too, with oversimplification, et cetera. So, but I see, and I see, I see these influences and how yeah. it would have an impact. Yeah. Um, when you were, when did you get your film education? I mean, I, you were at Bard. Was it entirely at Bard? Would you say? No, I think it started when I was very young. I think it's. I know it started when I was very young. I first of all, I grew up in New York on the upper on the upper Upper West Side. Right. That just was like, you know, there's like Lincoln Plaza, Lincoln Center. Um, I was going to the Angelica with my dad. Right. And oh. Waverly Place, which is now IFC. From the time I, I can't even remember. My parents didn't even, my parents did this thing with me where they, because I was the youngest and we lived in this one bedroom apartment, my father would get like like he would go to the Dominican store around the corner and get bootlegs every single Friday. Wow. And I would watch them because I because I was young and that's what everybody else was doing. And it would be like Pulp Fiction. And I, I saw Pulp Fiction when I was five years old. That's nice. And it's great. But I mean, a yeah. lot of people were like, whoa. But for me, it was just like my palate by the time I was in first grade was pretty strong. And... <laughs> And then I went, when I went to Bard, I had a lot of film major friends, but I didn't study film. I studied anthropology and which was amazing for like, just the way that like the, the opportunities that it gave me to travel and like, just sort of thinking about the meta narrative and other things that are like directly intertwined with art. And so, yeah, I mean, I just, my, my, my film education started very young. And that's, that's, I can relate. I, I mean, I sort of have a similar thing where I grew up in a time, of course, not to take too much time on this, but I, I also grew up in a time where there really wasn't a, nearly as big of a children's movie market, you know, like, uh, like there is in the last 20, 25 years. When I, so we always went to the movies that our parents went to, essentially, you know, with some exceptions. Um, and so you just kind of grew up with watching these incredible films. I grew up in a very remarkable time, you know, in terms of films here in the United States. So I, I also had a, a real education from the time I was very young. And I'm a New Yorker like yourself. So we have an incredible access here, right? We're lucky in that way. Yeah. You know, um, and you chose to shoot Beba in 16 millimeter, which wasn't the most practical choice. You want to talk about that for a second like why was this also go back to your influences i mean it definitely goes back to my influences and it also just goes back to my own sensibilities i feel like one of the things that i love so much specifically about 16 millimeter film is that it is limited and pulsating so whatever it captures is limited and it's pulsating the way that we experience it and there's no better way to define intimacy, literally intimacy to me is limited and pulsating. And this is an intimate film. Eh, I guess, <laughs> you know, you couldn't do, you, you just had to make a big commitment um, to show, to be completely, it seems like completely transparent. That's the way it seems. And just like not try to zhuzh up any family issues or whatever. Whatever uh, is there is what you show in terms of your family dynamics, your your friends, et cetera. And um, was, were you already kind of predisposed th that way? Or did you have to kind of just rip a Band-Aid off in a way to make this film? I mean, what, was it a choice even? Sometimes it feels like it was a choice and sometimes it feels like it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And it's like a very personal feel, like big, bigger picture thing. Um, I think it was a little bit of both. I think there was some moments, like some moments where it was like a rip the bandaid off moment. But for the most part, I was very committed to making something that was authentic and that many people could connect to as many human beings as possible. And what did your, and um, you mentioned obviously what with the screenings that, by the way, let's mention 
Tribeca screenings start tomorrow at uh, 5.45, at, all at the Village East Cinema, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, there's one on Thursday, the 16th at 9.45 p.m. See, that's one I would go to. And Saturday at 4 o'clock. Uh, I think you should go to this movie late as possible because when you come out of a theater, it's late at night. You have a your mind is in a kind of a more open place than if you go back and it's like the traffic of the days. I mean, you know, it's like a personal feeling about it. This particular film and thank you so much. Yeah. I totally feel that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I really. I really, I only wish I, I have to go back and check out to see where I, where, how I was exposed to the film because I watched it at home, which isn't like ideal, but um, yeah, I was really glad for the occasion. Um, so your parents are going to come down. Have they seen it yet? Have, or your family, your, your siblings, are they coming? My parents were at TIFF. So they seen came it. to Toronto. That's awesome. Yeah. And they'll be there. And my siblings, they haven't seen it yet, but okay. they'll see it very soon. I'm not worried about it. my parents were the were the big, you know, they're the generational difference and um sure. Seen it and they are very supportive. Oh, that's good. Even and mom especially or mom too. Yeah, they're both my mom's here. She lived in Mexico and she came here just for Tribeca. Like Oh, so she crossed several countries to get there. Mm -hmm. Your mom has since moved to Mexico. Yeah, she's retired there. Oh, okay. Um and yeah, I mean what did your what did they what did they make of the film? Did they and also at Q, the Q and A's up in Toronto, where it was at the light box or something? Like that, did they were they uh, people have got to be kind of really want to ask some probing questions? I'm guessing about your your uh, you know issues, the family issues. I think people have been very open about their own. Like it's really oh. interesting because which I really appreciate. Yeah. I think there have been a, some a few questions that are very sort of um, about my intimate family. Um, but I think it, it's been really interesting and, and beautiful to hear other people's stories and how the film has resonated for them to think about themselves rather than more of me. Yeah. yeah, that makes complete sense. I didn't yeah. think of that, but that's right. I mean, and maybe to feel less, um, I don't know, um, maybe they feel more uh, a feeling of unity with others about, or, you know, it's an isolating thing when you have family difficulties and estrangements or friction or, you know, there's damage. Uh, you don't, you know, what what you're doing is in a way by showing this film is, um, saying, yeah, it's okay. This is life, you know. Yeah, here, I'm like going to show it. Exist. What's that? It's okay to exist. Yeah, exactly. There's no shame in this. We yeah. all we all go through it. Um, and I noticed when you describe Beba, which is uh, was your childhood nickname. And I was wondering, is uh, you do you feel like the person in this film that you made is a variation of you, or do you feel like do you is, or do you recognize yourself completely in that person on on the screen? Well, the film ends starts when I'm like in my early twenties and it ends when I'm in my late twenties. Like actually working on the film was a longer trajectory than that, but okay. So it definitely feels like I'm in my early 30s now. Definitely feels like something that comes from a version of myself that was in my 20s. <laughs> but you don't feel like this is a character, let's say, as opposed to. I think it's a version of myself. Okay, that's a fact. That was a past, like from from the time frame of my early 20s to mid to mid late 20s. Okay. Um... And what do you make of that person now? I mean, she's just doing her best. That's just, that's honest. Um, and did you create, this is kind of like uh, something I was wondering about. Did you create a structure for the, what point did you, did you create a structure for the film? At, like, was it, cause you, like you say, you started it at least eight years ago, if not more than that. 
the production took like a good solid eight years, right? Just shooting it. Did you, yeah. do you have a structure in mind? Because it's film actually does have a three act structure. It's just very <laughs> existential and like weird and experimental, but, and yeah. it has to do with the writing of the film. Like I wrote with a three act structure in mind. Like it's like, there is like an inciting incident. There is an act one and act two and act three, but it's existential. Mm -hmm. Like there is a climax, but it's existential. So it actually does follow it, but most people wouldn't like, which makes it, which is okay. Cause maybe it was more for me, but. Yeah. Um, I don't think it really makes a difference too much. Uh, as long as you have something, you know, passionate that you want to express ultimately is the most important thing to me. When I'm seeing a film, I just want to connect to the film and to the person up there, you know, and, uh, and that, that's what happened. So uh, are you, are you planning on taking uh, another eight years or so for the next project? Definitely not. I hope the next <laughs> project takes a couple of years at most. <laughs> yeah, well, you got a good distributor for this film, so it should be a little easier to make the next one. I mean, it's never easy, but it could be easier. Uh, Neon is distributing, which is a nice, I bet they've been great to you. I'm just guessing it's a They're good They're incredible. Pair. I love them. Really? Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. They believe in you and the film. I love them. I love okay. Neon. Do you have any thoughts about what, where, where, what you would do next? I mean, you're still immersed in this project. I do, I do but I want to keep it close. But I do, I do have thoughts on what's next. And there's a lot coming from me and I'm very excited to share it with the world. I imagine because I mean to spend eight your entire youth in a way young adulthood on this one project is yeah that's got to be limiting to artistically or creatively when you probably want to you're bursting with creativity you want to I'm, I'm just guessing. Yeah I mean I think one of the things is like people are like well what's next is it going to be and I'm just like I mean I've been watching movies in my head since I was five years old. Sure. Like, there's there's things are coming well i'm, I'm i wish you uh, a tremendous luck with the screenings coming at tribeca i know you're going to have an incredible time at these meeting your the audiences and the conversations that will take place um and um and uh i, th I think your family will also have a great time you know so good luck with the good luck with the screenings and with its i, I look forward to maybe we can do this again when uh at the uh, theatrical premiere of the film. Yes, which will be in, it'll be in theaters. It'll be at the IFC Center on June 24th in New York. Oh, that's soon. Yes. Okay, because that- It'll be in LA on June 24th as well. Just At, at Lemley or something where, do you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do, you know do, do we, Miranda, did we find out where in LA? No, we still don't know. I'm so <laughs> sorry. We're we're out to neon for the list of theaters. So the reason why they don't is because the, the, so many theaters want to uh, want to host this movie and want to play this movie that it's just it's been a it's been a fight. To the oh my theater. god! But it's gonna be at the it's gonna be at the IFC Center in New York City. And what will happen is everybody will want to go to the film, and then it'll continue to spread throughout you know nationally around the country uh, for the coming weeks and months. So I urge everybody to go see this gorgeous film, which, you know, it, it's one of these things that looks gorgeous, but I could say it's a jagged pill because, you know, and, but it's always worthwhile when you have to kind of, uh, you know what I'm saying, by a jagged pill, it's, 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 it kind of will make you feel different things. You know, it's not, Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Take care until next time. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.